We are going to use this simulation to look at how the line spectra are generated uh, through the Bohr model uh, to explain the results that you saw in the lab. We have a setup here where we can fire ultraviolet photons of 94 nanometers into a box of hydrogen. And that box of hydrogen is much like the, uh, the discharge tube that you would have used in the lab. Here we have the picture of the Bohr model and there's an electron. Right now it's in level n equals 1. And over here we have a slightly different view of the same thing where we have the levels indicated n equals 1 all the way up to n equals 6. The energy in this ultraviolet photon will be enough to knock the electron up to n equals 6. So every time an electron is hit by a UV photon it will jump up to n equals 6. It then can fall back ultimately to n equals 1, but it can do so in many different ways. It can fall down to 5, then to 3, then to 1, or down to 4, down to 2, down to 1. So there's all sorts of different ways in which that electron can uh, go back to its ground state. As it jumps between the various levels, it will release the energy in the form of a photon and those photons will be recorded down here on this line right here. Uh, it's not quite to scale. We have a section for the UV um, uh, lines, we have a section here for the infrared lines, and then in the middle here we have the visible section, but that visible section has been extended quite a bit. The scale has been expanded compared to the others. So now we're going to start our gun. Go. Okay, we can. This is probably the best place to see it over here. When the electron absorbs energy, it jumps up to n equals 6, and then it can fall back down to ground level through a series of different steps. And through those steps, a photon is released, and the energy or the color of this photon is recorded on this chart down here. Now we're going to go a little bit more slowly so perhaps we can see it happen a bit more clearly. So the electron just went from n equals 2 to n equals 1 and that would have produced an ultraviolet photon down here. Now it absorbed energy, it's up in, in n equals 6, it has fallen to n equals 3, and now back down to n equals 1. Now any transition from any level to n equals 1 will produce an ultraviolet photon. Any transition back to n equals 2 will produce a visible photon. Any transition back to n equals 3 will produce an infrared photon. Any transitions that are smaller than that produce wavelengths of lower and lower energy. So you can see the electron going from n equals 2 to n equals 1. Now it absorbed energy there, it's up on n equals 6, falls to n equals 5, then n equals 3, and that was an infrared photon there, then n equals 2, and that was a red photon there, and then back down to n equals 1, and that's an ultraviolet photon. Now we're going to speed this up so we can begin to collect uh, more data <coughs> for our chart on the bottom. Okay, and we can see the... we're a bit low on the red photons here, but they'll slowly accumulate mostly ultraviolet <coughs> because the ground state is n equals 1 it's reasonable to expect that the uh, that there would be a lot of ultraviolet photons produced infrared and in, in this region here would be transitions up in the n equals 6 5 and 4 region these here are transitions to n equals 3 the visible ones to n equals 2 and the ultraviolet ones to n equals 1. In the lab, 
you were only able to see these transitions here. And notice there's one other blue line here, and sometimes it's possible to see that blue line in the lab, but I haven't yet actually been able to see it myself. I think it just happens that conditions are perfect. You can actually see four lines in the visible spectrum of hydrogen, but typically we see the three, the red, the uh, turquoise, and then the purple. If we were to keep on going, we'd soon have something in here which would resemble the visible spectrum that we viewed in the lab. We'll slow it down once again. And turn off. Well, before we turn off the gun, why don't we take a look at what it would look like if we were looking at it in terms of the Schrodinger model, which is the modern quantum mechanical model. What we have here are th regions of space occupied by the electron, and that region of space is called an orbital. And you'll notice that there are all sorts of different shaped orbitals happening there. If we slow it down a little bit, you might be able to recognize some of the shapes from pictures that you've seen in the textbook. And you can see up here now, we not only have the values for n, but we also have the values for l. When l equals 0, these are s orbitals and they are spherically symmetrical. When l equals 1, these are p orbitals and they're sort of like uh, dumbbells. When l equals 2, those are d orbitals. When l equals 3, those are f orbitals. And we can also see the numbers here. Okay, we'll switch back to the Bohr model and stop the process.